Hey guys, Troy here, and uh, when you think of high performance, uh, how about high performance civilian or commercial aircraft? Uh, you know, when you, you think about great big old jumbo liners, um, or how about transatlantic flights, um, maybe the Concorde. The Concorde uh, was a supersonic commercially available jet that was usually run by Air France and British Airways did a lot of transatlantic over to the US and uh, they were running from 1976 up until about 2003 and I remember the crash in uh, 2000 that was the first fatal crash that was involving a Concorde now it's not the first incident involving a Concorde there were a, a few uh, problems with parts that were ripped off at supersonic speed and tires that blew out and actually uh, tires blowing out happened at a much higher rate than subsonic aircraft but uh, the Concorde was actually a, an engineering uh, marvel for its time and with a pen manufacturer in France where you had Air France that was uh, usually running the Concorde uh, Waterman in the 1970s wanted to kind of duplicate that so they came out with the Concorde. Air France's flagship uh, jet was the Concorde as well as British Airways and so they tried to make a flagship pen. There's not a tremendous amount of information out on the internet about this but during the 1970s Waterman did come out with the Concorde and the idea was to give it a nice sleek look now looking at it here, it's got that um, on the cap, on, on the top of the cap, it's got that little angle down, which to me is very reminiscent of Waterman CFs. And then you've got the same kind of clip, which is more of a, an indentation stamp uh, than a bifurcated clip. But it gives you the idea that, yeah, that's kind of the Waterman design. And at the top of the cap, you could probably see right there, you've got that nice little angular side there. It's really smooth compared to like a brushed uh, finish on the rest of the cap. And you look at it, it does tell you right here that it's made in France and then uh, plaque um, and then it'll tell you that it, uh, it's, it's uh, plaque and then it's uh, an OG. And I'll show you a close-up of what that looks like. Uh, but that is very, uh, very common on some pens, and French especially, and what it means is it's gold-plated. So it's, it's a gold-plated cap that goes on top of this particular pen. Uh, it's a snap cap. All right. And you open it up, and it's going to look very familiar for people who are into Watermans. Several things that I see about it. Number one, it's got kind of a tapered down uh, section and that taper kind of reminds me a little bit of um, like a tape right or a CF. It's got a very different nib for a Waterman. Uh, the last one I showed you was very different. Now you can see why they wanted to call it the Concorde or why they angled this particular nib down similar to look like the nose cone or at least give you the idea of the nose cone of a Concorde jet and that's what it looks like on the bottom side. You've got this gold band here and it's actually faceted so you've got a hexagonal facet all the way around the barrel past um, past the connection to the section and they all angle down and taper down till it becomes perfectly round right around here at the end and you've got that little gold band and then at the very end of the barrel You've got basically like a little black button, and this is plastic. This is um, this is a molded um, or injected plastic, and it does come apart. And it is a cartridge converter pen. And when I first got it, you know, I was thinking, all right, it's from the 1970s. I mean, the Concorde Jet was from the 70s, so I figured, all right, let's see if it's got a modern cartridge or converter. So I got out a Waterman converter a modern day and I put it in and it would fit and I could even draw ink up into it but then it started to leak on me. It kept getting a lot of ink all the way around the uh, 
the section, it would just beat up and uh, it got some ink inside the cap. I said, all right, so that doesn't really fit right. So I got out a cartridge because I've actually had some converters that don't fit real well inside of a, a Waterman. So I got out a normal uh, modern day cartridge and that cartridge was actually longer so that they're about that long and it did not fit. It would not fit if I was going to put it inside this barrel. All right, so maybe that's not it. So I kept doing some checking and you know, it looks like it's a Waterman CF cartridge. Lo and behold, I took out a Waterman CF cartridge and uh, it did fit. So I flushed this sucker out like three times. When I first got it, I went ahead and flushed it out. And you could see from time to time, you, I still get some ink beads on the side here. I don't know why yet. I don't know if it just doesn't seat real well in this particular pen or, or if, uh, you know, if it's the way the cartridge seats. I really don't know. Uh, but I've been getting ink on my fingers here just while I've been doing this video, as you can see. And you can see there's another ink bead right there. So I've been playing with this throughout the course of the day today. And so I first flushed it out when I first got it. And you know, there was still some ink residue, and I recommend you do that. You get anything used. Uh, this particular pen came to me for, uh, through Japan. I've seen pens, when I was doing some research on this particular model, I've seen some people trying to get $340, $350 for one of these suckers brand new. And let's see if I can just make sure that's seated properly. Yep. And um, you know, when I say new, as a relatively new old stock, I, I'd, I'd have to look up the listings that I saw again, but some people were trying to get like $300 and some dollars for it. And it included um, a Waterman CF converter that went in with it. Um, I paid about $20, $21, including shipping. So I think I got the, the, the shipping for 5 bucks um, and the pen itself for about $16 on eBay. Uh, so um, shipped to me from Japan. So I flushed it out really well. I recommend that you guys do that no matter what, especially if you get something used. You never know how well it was taken care of. It flushed out well. It acted well. So that was a good sign. Uh, so then I tried the, the regular ink converter. Mm, no, not going to work. Flushed it out again. Uh, and then I tried playing with it some more. Uh, flushed it out yet a third time. Uh, so because what I ran across was it's a very dry writer. It, it does not lay down a lot of ink. So I wanted to see if there was any more ink residue stuck in it. Um, and also I changed colors in between uh, the different cartridges and stuff that I tried. It does post and it posts fairly securely. Um, but unfortunately, like I said, playing with it today, I've been getting some of those ink bubbles around the hand uh, or on the, on the section. So I'm going to have to keep playing with it to see if there's a, uh, uh, if another cartridge will work better or, or what. But, um, before I show you how to write with this thing and, and how actually it performs, I um, wanted to at least share with you uh, how it actually feels and then some statistics on it. So, it being a plastic pen, it's fairly lightweight. It's, um, you know, like most of my Watermans from the 50s up through the 70s, uh, it was designed to be a little sleek and fit well in the hand and be lightweight. So, with that part, I'm pretty happy. I cannot complain at all about the way it feels in the hand. I can't complain about the way it looks. I mean, to me, it's a sharp looking pen. I do kind of like the angular design of the nib. I like the uh, the, the six he well, the hexagonal uh, faceting. I like the gold trim. I like the uh, I like the trim uh, and and the angles of the cap. To me, that's a very sharp looking pen. And black and gold is always elegant to me. All right, so. Uh, as far as how it fits in the hand, you know, it's one of those things I, I would not want to write with it unposted because to me that's just not big enough and not hefty enough. Adds just the right amount of heft and the right amount of length to be able to post it and to be able to use it. You can still find these online from time to time. And just since I've been playing here, there's an, yet another ink bead that just showed up there. Look at that. That's too bad because I really like this pen and how it looks. Now as far as how it feels, I can tell you that I, I'd had to do just a tad bit of smoothing on this thing. I took out my micro mesh and, and it's got a fine point to it and I'm not a real fan of fines uh, but it is by the way an 18 karat gold nib uh, and I'll show you close-ups of the nib and, and a lot of the markings if I haven't already. So in here just a second um, let's go ahead and uh, let's show you all the statistics for the pen and then let's go ahead and put um, pen and ink to paper.
All right, let's go ahead and put pen and ink to paper. I filled this with a Noodler's Zhivago, uh, which you can see that's pretty much all that's left of it. I was uh, running low on the sample, so that's why I chose to, to suck it up with, since I was going to have to use a uh, blunt tip syringe in order to fill the cartridge, I figured I might as well just finish polishing off my uh, ink sample. I started out with um, like a Diamine Twilight in the modern Waterman converter, ended up just flushing that out since that wasn't going to work. Then I went ahead and um, tried a, a cartridge, a Waterman CF cartridge, said, nah, let's try the ink that's in there, let's see how good it is, because it was still fairly full, and that didn't go real well, and it was writing really light the pen kind of writes a little dry on that on the dry side anyway so I figured all right so let's go ahead and flush out that cartridge I'll put in a better ink so I chose that noodler's Javago to finish off that uh, particular ink vial so here we go this is a Waterman's a Waterman's Concord I can tell you that it writes better on Rhodia pad than it does on the, the notepads and on the copy paper that I've been using today. It is a fine point. I'm not real fond of fine nibs, but you know, it's still it's flowing better on Rhodia, but it's still a fairly dry writer. Uh, it's not real wet. So it was writing a little when you when you're using copy paper, it tends to run just a little bit on the dry side. When you've got a rhodia pad where the ink doesn't penetrate anywhere near as well, that's where it stays a little wetter here, so you can do a smear test with it. But you know that's what you got. And one of the things I can tell too, even if, even if I didn't know that the Concord was from the 1970s, just by looking at the the W of the logo, that's during the time period where Waterman was using that particular logo or that particular W. So um, if you look at the nib and you look at that uh, that Waterman's W, you can tell that's pretty much from the 70s. That's how I can easily date most pens uh, from Waterman's from that time period. So we know that it was from the 1970s. Uh, the Concord Jet was uh, in service 1976 to 2003. So Concord Jet came out in 76, same year my wife came out. Uh, so the, the pen has not been in use for, or, or the Jet itself has not been in use uh, for, what, 16 years, the last flights, because that, that uh, crash fatal crash was in 2000 and in 2003 is when they stopped running the Concorde. They did one more test in 2010 and that didn't go real well so they have discontinued that as well and as did Waterman discontinue the Concorde model in the 1970s. So like I said I did put in a Noodler's Javago and uh, this is kind of this is a black. It's got some green tint to it. So is it writing fairly smooth? Well, it's writing a little smoother now. But you can see, as if I write quickly, you get some really light spots. So, like I said, this pen writes a little on the dry side, and it has uh, since I first started playing with it. What I will say is it writes first time every time I go to pick it up so far. I have not had any issues with it being able to write. What I do have are issues with little tiny beads that are showing up on that section. And uh, as you can tell, uh, you know, this is from playing with it this evening. Uh, when I set up to go do the video and recording the video, this is what I got. All right, so that's something I'm going to have to work out. I do kind of like how it's got the the you know, almost like the inlaid nib, um, sort of like the Karen, um, and later on like you would have on the Edson. So it's not quite there yet, but you can see a little bit of the Karen in that design right there. So as far as I'm concerned, it sure looks like a precursor, at least in style, to the Karen. And unfortunately, that's one thing about Waterman. Waterman has not been a great innovator uh, in the past 30 or 40 years, which is unfortunate to me. They've had some great pens, don't get me wrong. In the 1990s, uh, the Edson, love the Edson. Absolutely love the Edson. I like the Karen, the Exception, uh, even the Hemisphere. Those are some halfway decent pens. But nothing really groundbreaking pretty much since the Edson as far as I'm concerned. So there's at least 20 
uh, 20 plus years, 25 years of no real innovation, and before that, not a tremendous amount of innovation, unfortunately. But it's still a nice looking, sleek looking, I love how it feels in the hand. I like, uh, if I'm going to go for a fine nib, this is the pen I would want to grab. Um, I just don't want to grab it and end up with ink all over my fingers. So that's something I'm going to have to work out on this pen and find out why. Like I said, I flushed this out a bunch of times. It just uh, really seems to beat up in ink. And I've had that happen when I've had a really bad or poorly seated cartridge or converter. And oddly enough, on Waterman's and on the Karen. Um, I've got a Karen actually that uh, really does not seat well on a converter. And I have to use cartridges instead of the converter on a Karen for that very reason. So. Anyway, there we go, ink sloshing around back and forth in that CF cartridge. So that's my latest toy, and it's my latest challenge to play with a little bit. Uh, but the Waterman's Concord from the 1970s is my latest edition. I've got more on the way. Um, I mean, I've got I've got several other pens on the way. I actually got a couple of Waterman's a Mont Blanc, um, and I've got. Uh, some Japanese pens on the way still. So, you know, I'll keep bringing the videos if you keep watching. Thanks. Bye.